Welcome to another episode of Where the Stones Have a Story to Tell. This is part two of our Snake Cave series, where in the last episode, we started to lay out a vast ceremonial site here at Gilbert Hill State Forest, Foxborough, Massachusetts. We covered a snake effigy, a cave, a linear cairn that brought us right here to two structures, a split boulder cairn, and a niche. This episode, we're gonna complete the LIDAR tour and the layout of this location uh, by heading down to a prayer seat that is directly in line here and then beyond. <clears throat> After we wrap up this episode, we will come back and get into the research around the history, the mythology, and the possible purposes for this as a ceremonial site. So let's get to it. Amazingly, the line that is created, if you will, by the split boulder cairn and that niche face right down to the back of a prayer seat. Prayer seats were known to be used as essentially recharging stations for a shaman or shaman for particular ceremonial purposes. They would actually sit in them and possibly meditate. That's where they got vision quests and the like. So as we come into this, let's go to the video. This is the next object and that is a prayer seat and I take this to be very old prayer seat uh, with much of the base uh, with actual soil built up around it which takes thousands of years really to build that amount of soil so let's come around and take a quick look here this prayer seat is not only directly in line with the structure we just came from but it travels on and opens up directly to the next structure we're headed to. So let's go. This isn't the first time in this series we will follow the angle a prayer seat makes, and it won't be the last. There are a number of objects out in the woods that are right in line with how prayer seats open. But as we make our way up to this object I'm calling a labyrinth, it's really a gigantic boulder cracked with four aisleways in it, or a labyrinth. So we're going to take a quick look here from a bird's eye view is what this looks like top down because I think this is also critical to decoding the site. All right, so I'm going to overlay some images to this, the aisle, if you will, in this labyrinth that I've just highlighted with the blue arrow points due west and it's the only one that is open. The one to the right is an aisle and it is closed. The one to the bottom is also blocked off by stones and the one to the left is blocked off. So of all of the possible ways to get through this labyrinth, three out of four of the entrances or exits are blocked with stone. And the one that is open faces directly west. So let's take a look at the video. With the way this opens up and the nature of the linear cairn right around it, I'm going to throw out the idea that this has actually probably served the purpose of an enclosure during a ceremony here. We've covered enclosures in another episode. I'll put the card up on top if you want to go back and take a look at that. But the primary purpose of an enclosure was during, a per during the course of a ceremony, shaman would seek to call in spirits, maybe have spirits mixed together, the shaman would also seek to block certain spirits from entering the ceremony. So as we take another look at the inside of this structure and head out to where the camera what just was, and Tully's guiding us backwards. We see right here, and, and the reason why I open up to interpretation of an enclosure is the ending structure here of the linear cairn. Right against this cave structure, these stones placed here. So this linear cairn then has around this structure, a couple more here blocking that entrance, and then down to the linear cairn that travels off into that ridge line there. And it is that ridge line where we'll find our next <clears throat> and last structure. Turning back to the LIDAR and looking at that westward facing exit to that labyrinth or 
enclosure. We're going to follow down the linear cairn that moves from this feature as it heads toward the edge of the cliff or bluff or ridge line where we're going to go find the last object which is the overlook or terrace. So I don't know that this path that I'm following to the terrace is particularly important like the other ones were. Many of the other ones that we saw show a direct line to the next object. This one just happens to uh, be the way to get through there in the easiest path. I'm now approaching the terrace from the rear and the LiDAR imagery will wheel around and take a quick look at how uh, small this terrace is and it, it uh, possesses two curved alcoves uh, both of which I think were actually worked. Um, the erosion style would be very odd for that to be curved so the fact that it's facing an important direction indicates that uh, those alcoves were probably curved. So let's head to the video and check out that cliff. I wanted to take a shot from down below the terrace looking up the cliff or bluff. That is about 30 feet high. Right up there is a terrace we're going to be heading to. We'll come around this way, but from the last stop at the linear cairn and the in the enclosure, we came directly this way uh, and we'd be headed toward uh, the terrace from behind the terrace. Just wanted to show you how uh, high this is. This faces out. That would be toward the caves and what would be wetland in the spring. Spring wetland here, I think, is going to be a clue for us as we begin to break down uh, the purpose of the site. So with that, Let's head up. Okay, I'm gonna tie Tully to the tree there for safety. We're at the top now. Here's the ridge line here. Down there is where we just were. So out we go. There are two curved in areas on this terrace. This terrace here is about, I would say, about three feet, four feet wide there, about two feet there. This area is curved here, which is something you can see in the LiDAR. And as we head down to this area here, it is curved in there as well. Frankly, that looks worked to me. Uh, be a strange piece of erosion to be able to dig in around that spot. So it looks like that alcove has been intentionally made. If we think about now the rest of the site, the prayer seat is off in that direction, the cave is off in that direction, the wetlands that the cave and this terrace face uh, are right out here. I add this terrace as, as uh, part of the ceremonial site, not because it is found in much of the research, but it is definitely a feature that I've seen repeated in ceremonial sites here at Gilbert Hills State Forest and we will be surveying several other sites with an overlooked terrace to it. So I believe this area here probably was part of the site and for a couple of different reasons as I said it faces the water the cave faces, it faces the cave itself but also the direction out of here is 60 degrees. That has, happens to be if you remember from episode 28 the same exact angle if you were standing in the center of that center point of the snake effigy that faces 60 degrees as well and that angle is going to play into some of our potential interpretation of what was happening in this site as we go along this wraps up episode 29 here at our uh, ninth stop the terrace stop just to recap from the last episode in this episode we started at a snake effigy it points up to a trail that takes us into a cave uh, that cave going back up to the ridge line get puts us to a linear cairn that angles us directly toward a dual structure split boulder cairn and niche 
that structure is going to be pretty important in the decoding of the site as well because uh, those two together have a very specific known purpose which we will get to in the episodes as we decode this. Those two objects, the split boulder cairn and the niche, pointed directly down, back down to the valley, right to a prayer seat. That prayer seat along the same line pointed to a labyrinth enclosure. That enclosure is wrapped around by a, another linear cairn that touches this portion uh, of the this rock outcropping. So right down there, that linear cairn stops as it starts to wrap around here. And that brings us to a terrace overlooking water, also important, and overlooking the caves. That wraps up part one and part two, which is really laying out of the site. Now we'll get into the fun part, going through history, lore, research, and other sites to try to figure out what was happening here. Until next time, as always, thanks for watching.